And thanks indeed, Jomon. Welcome to Sports News on the News at 10. Africa's number one ranked table tennis player, Aruna Kodre, and his doubles partner, Egypt Omar Asar, have crashed out of the men's doubles at the ongoing IWTF World Tour, the Hungarian Open in Budapest. The African pair lost to Chinese duo of Fang and Zhu Yu, 3 0. In a one-side contest, Kadri, who is seated eighth in the men's singles, will face Germany's Stefan Mengel in the men's singles round of 32. The tournament serves as one of the qualifiers for the end-of-year World Tour Grand Finals, as players are expected to garner points for their qualification. Tunisia boosted their chances of reaching the Africa Cup of Nations quarterfinals with a 2-1 win over neighbours Algeria. Tunisia's victory takes them to three points in second place in Group B and leaves Algeria with only one point. Senegal became the first country to reach the quarterfinals after beating Zimbabwe 2-0. Now there are indications that Manchester United have agreed a deal to sell Dutch winger Memphis Depay to French club Olympique Lyon. The fee for the 22-year-old Netherlands international is £16 million, rising to £21.7 million. The pay scored seven goals in 53 appearances for United after moving from PSV Eindhoven for £25 million in May 2015, but he has played only eight minutes since the end of October. He has a leading scorer. He was, of course, the leading scorer in the Dutch top flight in 2014 and 2015 and was signed for former uh, United manager Louis van Gaal. World number 117, Dennis Istomin, says that it is unreal that he beat defending champion Novak Djokovic in the second round of the Australian Open. Istomin admits to beat the reigning champion in the second round of a Grand Slam was one thing, but to down the famously resilient Serb over five sets was bordering on the realms of fantasy. The former world number 33 was forced to play an Asian specific uh, Pacific wildcard tournament just to get the Australian Open after slumping out of the top 100 for the first time since 2010 uh, on the back of a string of injuries last year. In the meantime, world number two, Serena Williams has advanced to the third round of the Australian Open with an emphatic 6-3, 6-4 win over Czech Lucy Safarova. The second-seeded American, beat it for a seventh title at Melbourne Park, served up a storm. Kerbin, 15 aces and uh, 35 winners in the 86 minutes contest at Rod Laver Arena. Williams next faces compatriot Nicole Gibbs replace in the fourth round. The woman of the court. In the meantime, third seed Anieska Razvanska has been knocked out of the second round of the Australian Open by Croatia's Mirjana Lucic Buroni, becoming the highest seed to fall in the women's draw at Melbourne Park. World number 79, Lucic Buroni, uh, left Razvanska and the Margaret Court Arena crowd stunned with a 6 3 6 2 defeat of the former Wimbledon finalist. Rafa Nadal, in the meantime, stormed into the third round of the Australian Open with a 6-3, 6-1, 6-3 demolition of former finalist Marcos Bagdatis. And that wraps it up on Sports News on the News at 10. Many thanks indeed for watching. I'm Gimba Omar and uh, it's now back to the Now, we're hours away from the U.S. President-elect Donald Trump's inauguration in Washington, D.C. Earlier today, he tweeted, I have no doubt that we will together make America great again. There are, however, uncertainties about the incoming administration concerning the foreign policy for Africa. Our correspondent in Washington, D.C., Ayotunde Balugun, reports.
on January the 20th, Donald Trump becomes the next president of the United States. During his campaigns, he revealed little about his foreign policy priorities, leaving many to ask if his government will interact favorably with Africa. Former U.S. Ambassador to Nigeria, Mrs. Robin Sanders, says that both the Republicans and Democrats agree on some key issues on Africa. Even today we have Electrify Africa, which is a bipartisan um, uh, legislation. We have AGOA. So I'm hoping that that same kind of spirit of bipartisanship to keep some of these things continues into the next administration. The African Growth and Opportunity Act, AGOA, has been extended till 2025 by an agreement signed in 2015. This should help expand U.S. trade and investments in sub-Saharan Africa. And a U.S. foreign policy advisor, Jeffrey Gordon, bears his mind on the incoming government. Certainly he wants strong ties with Africa. He wants strong economic development between the United States and Africa. So economic development and strong business ties would be something to look forward to for a Trump White House. China in recent years has risen to become Africa's largest trading partner, a move many any analysts made economic threat. However, an advocate for Small Business Administration, Ngozi Bell, says Africa should be hopeful about Mr. Trump's government. So when we go back to our president-elect Trump, being a good businessman, if you recognize that the world is going after this continent, where 65% of the population is going to be the biggest growth population on the planet, then I assume that he's going to look at it from the perspective of the benefit to this country and how that win-win needs to be created. And I think we have to be hopeful about that. American University professor Kwaku Nwama also has some words for the African continent. If you compare what Bush did on the continent compare, uh, to speeches that Barack Obama gave, um, they don't compare. You know, look at PEFA, for example, which has saved African lives. Um, uh, programs that really put money on the continent. So my plea to Africanists is that we cannot disengage from working with the Trump administration. Political and economic observers say they will be looking to see how Donald Trump's foreign policies will better the African continent. Reporting from Washington, D.C., Ayotunde Balogun, Channels Television News. And the main news again. History was made today as Adama Barrow was sworn in as the new president of the Gambia. The ceremony which held in the Gambian embassy in Senegal has been applauded by world leaders who congratulated President Barrow on his assumption of office. Also today, President Mohamedou Buhari departed for the United Kingdom on a 10-day leave to the after, after the meeting with the country's service chiefs who briefed him on the deployment of Nigerian troops for the ECOWAS mission in the Gambia. Well, that's the news at 10 tonight. Thanks so much for staying with us. I'm Hijoma Bunyato. Do have a good night.